Imagine consuming 31 real whole fruits and vegetables every day. More nutrients from fruits and veggies can help our bodies with energy levels, strengthening our immune system, and so much more. Balance of Nature has taken 31 real fruits and veggies and powdered them into capsules locking in maximum nutrition. Try Balance of Nature with 35% off any Frisk preferred order, plus free shipping with promo code YES. Just go to balanceofnature.com and enter promo code YES to get 35% off. Give your body the natural boost it needs with Balance of Nature. Go to balanceofnature.com, promo code YES for 35% off. Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com renew to learn more. Welcome to Pretty Lies and Alibis. Join us as we seek the truth and travel the long road to justice. What's going on, everybody? It's Sunday. That means it's time for another episode of Pretty Lies and Alibis. I'm Gigi. What's good, Fruit Loop? Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I have a driving in terrible storms hangover yeah we it had was some, horrible we had some bad weather and on top of that driving in atlanta is terrible when it's a perfect day <laughs> much less in storms it's horrible like i hate it and there's no way around it yeah i mean it adds like an hour if you try to go up another road yep uh it was horrible lightning rain transfer trucks oh yeah it's it's bad i would rather drive in manhattan or i've driven in manhattan and la and i prefer it way more than atlanta well one time i'm driving and i look at taylor and i'm like i can't feel my hands Uh, like i let go because i was so tight on steering wheel yeah because it was just we saw like five wrecks yeah it's bad oh it's horrible yeah we had some rain thank goodness because i'm gonna tell you right now having an irritated pancreas and pollen with all the sneezing and coughing, it is no good. Oh, it makes you feel great. Oh, my gosh. At you. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was me all weekend. Yeah. I just, I'm ready for this to be over. And I'm not even a smidge better. Oh, yeah. It'll take a while. <laughs> but I tell you, today, we've had birthday weekends, the both of us. Um, our ma, Your mom, my dad share a birthday. Yeah. And then. And my niece. And then my great niece yeah. turned one um on the 23rd so we've just had all these birthdays to catch up on and so we have my great niece's first birthday today i just love her she makes me so happy but they had this buffalo dip so i've been on a clear liquid diet since i went to the er last week and today's the first day i could officially ease off of it because i'm going to tell you there's nothing sadder than meal time when you're looking down at some chicken broth for like the 50th time hey i'm gonna tell you i've been there done that so they had this buffalo dip and I had some, and I think it feels like there's a stampede of buffalo on my pancreas right keyword, now. Keyword, <laughs> keyword, buffalo means spicy. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm no. regretting that, but I go back to the doctor tomorrow, and we're going to check my pancreas levels. The bad news is if they're higher, I have to go into the hospital, but hopefully they'll be about the same, if not lower. Yeah, you don't want to go that route. No, I do not. I don't like being confined. Because they, like... If you go that route, then they are strict. Oh, I know. Like I'd have nothing. You'd have to like smuggle me some real food. <laughs> I ain't getting in trouble. You probably have a nurse up there. Uh, yeah, I ain't getting in trouble. Yeah. So you know how I always say I never want to go to the pokey. Yes. I'm gonna tell you, I might catch a charge because the lady at the graveyard was rude to my Grammy. Uh oh. The other day about some scuff marks on my grandpa's headstone, and so we were up there and. I tried to wipe it off with some water and a little a towel. And the lady tells my grandma on the phone that you're not supposed to use a rag on those headstones. And she was just rude to her the whole time. So I'm going to tell you, I might catch a charge. Meanwhile, it's probably the lawnmower guy who hit it. So you can't use a towel on it, but you can hit it with a lawnmower? Yeah, well, that's exactly what it looked like. So yeah. I always joke, I don't want to go to the pokey, but I'll go for my Grammy. Grammy, Grammy probably break out the Kung Fu Karate Kid. <laughs> she was mad. 
she was like, how dare her talk to an 86-year-old woman who's grieving like that? And I agree. Yeah. I'm going to call tomorrow and give that lady a piece of my she mind. She better respect her elders. I will probably feel bad after I do it, like I always do, but I'm getting it out. I'm <laughs> not going to be nice. I'm going to eat some buffalo dip before I do it, so I'm extra fired up. Yeah. So, jumping back to our trip real quick, uh, Taylor got some cool antique stuff. <sighs> I tell you what, man, I'm half convinced her room's haunted from these <laughs> antiques. My cat was possessed in there the other night. Oh, I'm not th- e- this new one is it's pretty good. I have a similar picture of my family, some ancestors in my family. So it's just these two random people from the 1800s. Yeah, the guy called them. This is uh the oh I forget the um all oh, Stearns. It was Stearns because the way you look like. In antique photos, they had to sit there so long. Nobody smiles. Yeah, they did not look happy. So it's like, I'm miserable because I've been sitting here for eight hours having my picture drawn. I so. know. I, well, that makes sense because I'm always, I'm always thinking, why don't people in the 1800s smile in their pictures? Oh, no. But nope. it makes sense. Yep. So thanks for everybody who's reached out about Sherlock uh, voicing concerns that he shouldn't be allowed to run free. And so I just want to reiterate He's, he's limited into where he can go outside. He, he stays on our, our deck, so we can't get off of there. Um, but he's much happier now that he has a way out. Yeah, he, he watches the birds out there. He does, but he, can't, he doesn't just get to roam the neighborhood. So thank you guys for the concern, because I know you love Sherlock and don't want anything to happen to him. And I don't either, except for about 5 o'clock this morning when he came in from the outside and proceeded to run across my pancreas. <laughs> You come I mean, up out of there. I almost hit the ceiling. Well, yeah. So we're going to get started because we have a lot to talk about. Yeah. We are going to get into uh, Jake Wagner, who just out of the blue pled guilty to all the murders of the rodents. Shocked. Totally shocked. But first, we have some filings in the Valo Daybell case that um, we're going to go over. There is a hearing on the 28th of this month, uh, next week, three days, Sunday, Wednesday. At 9 a.m., we'll cover that. That's good math. Thank you. I'm, yeah. I mean, I've been meditating at night thinking maybe my math skills could improve. And there you go. But that was only counting to th- like three, so. Yeah, you took your shoes off over there, I think. I did, and there's smoke coming out of my ears. Yeah. <laughs> so we love Scott Rush. And if you guys are not following Crime Talk on YouTube, please go and do that because he breaks it down so easily. Um, and then yeah. there are a lot of the things in these filings that we don't understand. And so we always go to Scott's channel and he's got our back. Yeah. He's it's so simple. He It's easy to understand. Very easy to understand. It's, I'm just so glad he does this because it really helps us out here on the podcast. Um, and he says, maybe this judge is close to having his belly full. I hope so. Stuff. So what, what happened this week for Luke? So prior filed a motion opposing the use of DNA and also to preserve samples and to photograph the samples and a motion to review lab records. Um, so the state has the DNA samples um, that they're using for testing. So Pryor says it's not fair um, that they won't be any samples left to conduct their own testing. Um, and basically what Scott said was, The judge probably won't require the sample to be shared, but rather the judge will set a date for testing and allow the defense to have their expert be in the room and when the sample was tested and all that stuff. Um, And Scott makes a great point that experts are very expensive and who's going to pay that? Right, because I don't see any way Chad and Lori have any money left at this point. Now, we know Pryor is on the deed to Chad's house. Yeah. But, I mean, he got, what, 430000 when Tammy died. But if you look at where they lived in Hawaii, it was very expensive. They traveled some. They've had at least five lawyers alone for Lori since she's been arrested. Yep. Chad's had a, a lawyer himself. He had Mark Means originally, if you remember. <laughs> yeah. And then he got prior. And yep. they're, in the, they're in the same building. I don't see how the, any of that money is left, but... Who knows? But that is a good point. Who's going to pay for this expert to go in there? Yeah. Um, So Means then filed his own motion, kind of latching on to Pryor's motion. Okay, I just have a question. I don't know how this works. Some of you may know how this works, but photographing samples of DNA. (laughs) 
What, you gonna what are take you, a, you taking a picture <laughs> of spit? <laughs> no, you go take a picture of one of those little slabs that they are not slab. The little glass things. Yeah. I mean, DNA is... A beaker. Is it a beaker? I don't know. They put it on them little slides, I think, but it's invisible to the naked eye. We had biology. I guess maybe... Something's it, a beaker. It, well, beaker's what know. you put the stuff in and beaker. pour it and stuff. I just like saying that word. Beaker. Wasn't that on the Muppets? <laughs> beaker. Beaker. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, Means adds in his in his filing that there was a midnight correspondence from the prosecutor. Okay. <laughs> He copied the court in the email, and he says that Wood has participated in ex parte communication. And if you guys remember, ex parte is that one side talks to the judge without the other being involved. Here's the problem. It's not ex parte because Mark Means was copied in the email. Yeah, he was was CC'd. (laughs) I mean. That means you're part of the conversation. Okay, so he says that Wood is participating in backdoor communications, and he says that Wood is protecting himself from a Brady violation. So what's a Brady violation? So a Brady violation occurs when the government fails to disclose evidence materially favorable to the accused. Um, The reversal of a conviction is required upon a showing that the favorable evidence could reasonably be taken to put the whole case in such a different light as to undermine confidence in the verdict. Okay, so... I ain't gonna lie. I, I, when you said Brady violation, I went straight to the Brady Bunch. I did too. Yeah. Out of my nose. <laughs> Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. <laughs> sure, Jan. Oh, man, I love the Brady Bunch. Oh, yeah. That was some good, good but, stuff. Uh, midnight correspondence? That he's copied in. I mean, yeah. really, it's... Backdoor communications? I don't know. I mean, I, we try not to be negative to anybody involved in this case. Sometimes it's very hard. Yes. It, and I, I mean, even Scott is saying this guy needs to invest in Grammarly or some kind of a sentence structuring software that, because it, I, without saying it, Scott is just saying that means is the hot mess express. Yeah. But I'm I'm I, I'm gonna get that Grammarly though. It sounded pretty cool. I used to have Grammarly, and it made me sound very Grammarly. See, yeah, That's, I need that. So Mark Means also says that the court is potentially making the court an unnecessary witness in future litigation. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. Okay, Mark. So what does Wood say? So in Wood's letter, he addressed the accusation that the defense is missing thirty discovery items. So if you remember, that's what Pryor said in their last hearing or whatever. Um, And Wood says, you haven't told me what you're missing. Um, He says that they've given the defense everything except Tammy's autopsy report. And he actually says in that that Fremont County Prosecutor hasn't given it to him, so he can't share it. Yeah. He doesn't say, and this is what I call he doesn't say he doesn't know what's in the report. Oh, you know he knows. He just says they haven't given it to him yet. Right. So. But here's the thing. The charges that Chad and Lori are currently charged with have nothing to do with Tammy Daybell. Of course, all of this stuff is linked. But right now, they're not even charged in Fremont County. Oh, I think, is Chad in Fremont for these charges? No, it's not Fremont, is it? Gosh, I don't know. Fremont's where his house is. Okay. So. But ta- there have been no charges, obviously, for Tammy Daybell yet. And I don't know why. I mean, here's the thing. With Alex's autopsy, really quickly, we had a natural death. It was ruled natural, and they released the autopsy. So what does it tell us? Well, they're holding on to it, so maybe there's something there. But I think they're trying to square away these charges with the kids. Yeah. And then maybe they do all of it at once or whatever. This but is, they, they're not entitled to Tammy's autopsy report right now. Yeah, because they haven't filed charges. This right. is my thing. Prior means just go ahead and cough it up and say, okay, you killed Tammy. So just go ahead and start working on your defense for that. Well, That'd I be th- easy. Yeah. But they have to save all this stuff. Yeah. Silence in this part of this whole investigation to me tells a lot. If it were natural then let's just get it out there. It was natural and move on. So there's no speculation going on between prior and means and the general public. That's why they haven't said anything. I fully believe something was found. I totally agree. 
So Wood says that he's surprised by the accusation they were missing so much discovery. And he says that his office has double-checked and they should have received everything they have. Maybe they didn't look at the back of the papers. <laughs> yeah. They just front. <laughs> read the front, left off the back. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Um. So Scott says the reason Wood is filing this with a court, which he said normally this is just discussed. Um, kind of informally. Yeah. Is that usually... Um, is it, the reason why they're filing this with the court is it, usually this is done informally is because means and prior are constantly accusing Wood of misconduct. And yeah. I totally get it. Yeah. He wants it on the record. Wood is just covering his booty yeah. right now. I mean, and, and that's the way to do it because you don't want this case to get wrapped up in this bickering, which it is right now. Yeah. You got these two jamokes over here who keep saying, hey, you didn't give us this, you didn't give us that, but yes, I did. I mean, the court has not... Except for maybe one time they sided with Means. I can't even remember what it was about. There's been so much. But pretty much every other time the judge has told Means and Pryor, first of all, what you say isn't true in the filing. I mean, they're not they're not credible with this judge at all. No. Woods has I mean, Wood has not been reprimanded or anything. It's just yeah. it's insane. And we're getting caught in these little stupid details. And I kind of hate that because we have two kids who the bodies have still not been released to the family. Yeah. And this was my question on the DNA stuff. What DNA are you speaking of? Well, we don't know. We assume it has to do with the kids, but here's my thought. They still have the kids' bodies yep. stored wherever they're stored. It would be very easy, maybe not with Tylee so much just because of the condition of her remains, but... It seems to me if there is a very limited amount of this DNA to test and it's very hard to get it, I would kind of assume maybe it's Tammy's because if you need more DNA from her, you have to exhume her again. And they're not going to do that. Yeah. And the other thing I'm thinking, okay, is it DNA from uh, like the tape, the duct tape? Is it DNA on their client? It could be. I mean, there's because they didn't say there's yep. a lot of possibilities. And that's a really good point. Is it just physical evidence they found with the bodies? Yeah. That was very little in quantity. We yeah. just don't know. I'm interested to find out, though. Yeah. My, the DNA is running out. Yeah. There's not going to be any left. <laughs> Um. Yeah. Just it's, go ahead and chalk it up, and just just prepare for your defense of murder. Yeah, because we know that's what it was. Right, and I mean we've heard rumblings for a while now, but you know that there could be some news sooner than later. Um. Somebody commented on our YouTube channel and said that um I believe that they said Scott said he had heard there may, may be news coming soon. Yep. So it's time. I mean. We're looking at, we're what, uh, two months away almost to the day of when Chad was arrested a year ago? Yeah. It's going on for a while. I mean, at this point, it seems like in a normal world, these trials would have happened. Oh, yeah. So, it's yeah. just, we're... We, we know our world is not normal right now. No, none of it's normal, and there have been reasons, but still... If you look at the times that they've been in court bickering about stuff, and I mean, when I say they, I mean the defense... Man, it's just the actual times we've been in court for something that was pertinent to this investigation, and you could probably count on one hand. Yep. It's all been fluff. Yep. Smoke and mirrors. So we'll see what happens. You said Wednesday, right? Yeah, Wednesday at 9 a.m. So uh, that's their time. Um, so, yeah, that was a big thing about are you talking about Eastern Standard or whatever? So it's 9 o'clock Ohio. Mountain. I mean, I Idaho time. Mountain, yep. Yeah, mountain time. Yep. So we will cover that if it doesn't go to a breakout session again. If it does, I'm going to be mad. I'm so, <laughs> tired of that little, I know. that little logo. I got that logo memorized. It's burned in my retina. I know, right? I, I'm running out of things to count on there. Yeah. So our next big news, if you guys remember, or if you're new, new to us, um, we have a lot of new listeners. We did a couple of episodes on the Roden murders in Ohio that took place in 2016, where a family of four has been arrested and charged with multiple counts of murder for slaughtering a family of eight in their sleep during the night. And it's 
it all stemmed down to custody. For those of you that don't know about the case, we're not going to get too deep into the backstory. But um, you had one guy, Jake Wagner, who was part of the family of four accused of doing the murders, who was in a relationship with Hannah Roden, who was one of the eight and the mother of his child. Yep. And so essentially this family was very cult like to me. They they did everything together. Even their finances were kind of intermingled. And they had gotten custody of the other brother's son by essentially scaring to death the mother of that child. If you remember when kind of the straw that broke the camel's back was she was at their house. And whatever was threatened to her was so bad, she ran out of the house and hid on the property until dark, until yep. she could leave. So they had a that's, history of wanting custody of these grandkids. That's pretty big. That's a big deal. I do think the mom kind of was the one that was obsessed with the custody of these kids. Yeah, well, if you remember in the uh, fake, it was the forged uh, child custody documents. She got the kids if anything happened to the other son. Right. All the stuff was forged three weeks before the murders. Yeah. Um. So anyways, they've been arrested since 2018. Nothing's gone to trial. Jake was scheduled to go to trial in August of this year. He pled guilty on the fifth anniversary of these murders. Yeah, I was shocked when you text me that. I was I was like, what in I had, the world? I had to reread. I, Kathy Russin, who's over at Law and Crime Network, great person to follow if you love true crime. She had tweeted it out, and I, I kind of had to read it two, three times to make sure I was reading it correctly because it seemed to me this family was thick as thieves. Oh yeah, and nobody was going to turn just because of what we had heard about how deep their relationship was. Well, if you remember, uh, one of the jail phone calls to. Uh, Angela's mom, they broke the law and had Jake on there. Mm -hmm. So it was like a three-way call where they could communicate with each other. So that's pretty tight. Right. My theory about why is I have a couple, but when you have these kind of families where the apron strings are never cut and it's, I think it's called failure to launch where kids just stay right under their parents and Everything is done with their approval and so on and so on. I kind of wondered if a few years in county jail, away from these guys, largely he has had no communication with his brother or his mom or dad since they were arrested. And I kind of wonder, being away from them for a few years, did did it kind of show him that maybe, I don't know. I mean, did he think, look what they got me into? I don't know. Did yeah. he have a come to Jesus moment? We, something. Something snapped in him and he was ready for this to be over. Yeah. Now his lawyer says that the reason he did this was because he felt sorry for the rodents. I don't know how true that is, but he pled guilty. And not only that, he's been working with prosecutors for a while now from what we've learned. Yeah. And has led them. Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com slash renew to learn more to the murder weapons that they previously couldn't find and also a vehicle that was bought specifically to use in these murders. Yeah. He sang like a canary. Oh, yeah. He told them everything. So uh, we said that this came on the fifth anniversary of the murders. Technically, they said he decided to change his plea last Saturday. So a little over a week ago. And he said he wanted to spare his life. Yeah. Now... We were watching this just right before we went on, the video about Jake. Every time he pled, he, he would say, I am guilty. Yeah. But what did we notice when it came to Hannah, his ex-girlfriend and the mother of his child, Hannah Gilly, who is Frankie Roden's fiance and the mother of one of his kids, and Kenneth Roden. What did we notice? He, he had this nervous grin kind of, sort of. But it was more, it it was like I'm I'm grinning at a bad time. It was like he was trying to. 
I don't think he wanted to show emotion. Yeah, he was trying to hide or suppress, I guess is a word, suppress emotion. Mm -hmm. um, Because a couple of times he didn't even answer right away. Yeah, with Hannah's, with his ex-girlfriend's murder, he stopped and closed his eyes and kind of, it seemed like he just had a hard time getting it out. A big gulp. Yeah. Yeah. Big swallow. Now, I'm not saying that he was remorseful because... At the end of the day, you have to look. They murdered eight people, and not only that, they left a four-day-old newborn in the bed with his mother, covered in blood, with her mother. It was a girl. Yeah. Same thing with Frankie's kids. You had an infant in the bed who, according to Bobby Joe Manley, who found the bodies, said the baby was trying to nurse his dead mother and was at the same time patting his dad's chest. Yeah, it's just horrible. So these are not good people, and I don't care if he felt a tinge of remorse. Uh, you're a bad person. You're evil. Yeah, I mean, you killed five out of the eight is what he's claiming. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, but you do know people. I, I know people who will smile at the most inopportune times when they want to cry. Yeah. And I watched it. And with all the other times that he said, I am guilty, he didn't do this. No, it was only on those. Yeah. And if you think about it, at some point he loved Hannah. Hannah Gilly and Kenneth Roden were, I hate to say collateral damage, but... Maybe he just never had a problem with with those two. Yeah. And so, for whatever reason, maybe he did a few years thinking about it. Did he feel remorse? Who knows? Who cares? I mean, at least the family will not have to go through his trial this year. Yeah. Yep. Um, So, Jake's attorney did say that he, he goes into this with eyes wide open, that he said it was the right decision. Um he said Jake knows he will die in prison and that it was a terrible crime and he's sorry. Right. So part of this plea deal, um, one of the things that happened is they took the death penalty off, not only for Jake, but also for his mom, Angela, dad, Billy, and his brother, George the fourth. So none of them can now be sentenced to death for these murders. Could that have been motivation for him to do it? Is it that he doesn't want his family to be sentenced to death? Who knows? But like we talked about, how strong was this case? I do not think it was strong. And I'll tell you, if I, I mean, I'm glad that he pled guilty, but they had little, very little DNA evidence. And we know they didn't have the murder weapon. Yeah. So if I were any of, well, I mean, the other three, he kind of, you know, he tripped them up because now the state's going to have a rock solid case against the rest of them. Yeah. Cause he's testifying, but I would have taken my chances in court. Cause it only takes one. Yeah. It yeah. only takes one juror to doubt. And I'm going to tell you, I read an article. I'm going to post it on our uh, Twitter feed and our Facebook feed. I'm trying to find it's called murder on union Hill road. And it's from Hazlitt. And one of our listeners sent it to me. And uh, so thanks for that. But they said that, um, oh, I just lost my whole train of thought. I had a pain. What's up? Where where was I going with this? I have no clue. No, we were talking about Jake and him testifying. And you know what I think while you're trying to get your thought? Oh, I got my thought. Okay, go ahead. So what I wanted to say is when you read this article, you're going to see that there were people in that community about three, four months after the murders who really were not shy in expressing that they did not think very highly of the rodents at all. So if you think about jury selection or something to that effect, they probably would have, I don't think they were going to move these trials. You could have gotten one person on that jury who maybe had a run in with the rodents at some point or whatever, who wouldn't have convicted. Yeah. It's almost like Jake in his, and I don't know his mind because I'm not in it, but is he trying to be the savior of the family while I'm saving y'all from the death penalty? Maybe. But um, I ain't gonna lie. I, would, I wouldn't I would want to live in prison. I would be okay uh, going to meet Jesus because I, I ain't hanging out in there. Yeah, well, uh-uh. I, I don't know. I mean, he flat out said they're all involved. They were all involved the night of the murders. Yeah, so something has caused him to confess and spill his guts everywhere and tell everything. But it's not totally off the table that a few years in jail 
he's had time to ponder what they did. He probably sees the murders in his head. I mean, could it just be simply that he is remorseful to an extent and just wants it over? Yeah. But I'm going to tell you, the prison where he could be sent to, Charlie Reeder, the sheriff who initiated, who was the lead on this, he was the sheriff at the time of the murders, and actually one of the people that the Wagners were heard kind of making a hit list of people associated with the case they wanted to murder, they could very well be in the same prison for three years while Reader is serving his sentence for kind of misusing state funds. Wow. I mean, how weird is that? Yeah. That is just strange. I mean, he even made comments about what the Wagners had allegedly said about wanting to kill him and DeWine and uh, some of the other people associated with the investigation. Can you imagine how awkward it's going to be if they bump into each other in the chow hall? Uh, Yeah, that'll be a little (laughs) weird. It's always... I know they there, there's like special precautions they use when officers get arrested and are in prison or whatever. But yeah, that's it'd be crazy to be in prison with people you put there. Yeah, I don't know. Because I don't think you would be treated fairly. No, I don't think so. But no. then again, from what I've heard, they don't just put you in segregation because people don't like you. Yeah. So we, you know, they don't, it's not like that in prison. You're part of the general population. We told the story of... Uh, Gabriel Hernandez's mother, who was in the same facility as as the girl I know. And according to her, um, she got beat up and robbed so much she attacked a prison guard just to go back into segregation. So somebody like her who's had a documentary, a a multi-part documentary on Netflix made about her crimes was in Gen Pop. Yeah. So who knows? I just thought it was very ironic. Oh, yeah. That they could potentially be in the same prison for a few years. Yep. So Jake received eight life without parole sentences and 160 years for the firearms charges, plus a $370,000 in restitution and fines. Yeah. And some people say, why do you get eight life sentences and 160 years on top of that? And the answer is this. Every person that was murdered that night deserves to have the charges for those murders put on Jake and the rest of the family. So I just hear that a lot. Like, why do they get five life sentences, eight life sentences? It's just, it's, it's the penalty for murdering eight people. Yeah. Yep. So we talked about Jake says he shot and killed five of the eight victims, um, that he's deeply sorry. Uh, he said it's all accurate when the prosecution read the facts. Mm-hmm. Um, the prosecution did say they now have enough evidence beyond doubt to convict Billy, Angela, and George the Fourth. Um, the murders blah, 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 blah. that was the murderer. <laughs> the murders were committed uh, in the early hours of April twenty second of two thousand sixteen. Yeah, because we know Dana had worked a double shift that night, and then she was posting on Facebook after midnight. So it seems like at some point. Probably after two or three in the morning is when all this started. Yeah. So my question is, I mean, if you look at this, this case is super strong now. Oh, yeah. I I don't think the other, I mean, the prosecutor said in court when Jake was pleading guilty, it's very possible at this point that the other three just take a plea or just plead guilty Um, to take a plea. I mean, usually the death penalty is their bargaining chip. And now that that's off the table. Um, I don't see how any of them have a trial and argue this successfully after Jake has told told the prosecution what happened. Yeah. I bet I would love to have been a fly on the wall oh, my when s- they found out Jake told. Oh, yeah. Um, and the other thing that I was thinking about, do you remember the tattoo issue where Billy has a tattoo of a scorpion on kind of between his thumb and his forefinger that goes sort of up towards the wrist area? Yeah. They were wanting a photograph of that just recently. They said that the, the the state wanted to get a picture of that tattoo. I kind of wonder if maybe Jake didn't give them some back meaning of what that tattoo meant. I would be curious to know if he had that tattoo before the murders because mm-hmm. I think I've read that scorpions, for each little part of the body is how many people you've murdered. And I zoomed in and tried to count. I'm pretty sure I counted eight. Huh. So who knows? That's I mean, interesting. I think he told him everything. I don't think he held back. Yeah. I mean, at that point, you're pleading guilty. Why not just tell it all? 
here's my other thing though. I think they photograph all that. They do, but for some reason, the prosecution specifically wanted a picture of that, and it was just recent. They wanted to be huh. able to photograph it, so I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure what happens with that. And maybe, too, it's they want their own photograph and not one that the jail took. Sure. That way, there's no question or about... Or maybe focused in a different right. way or something. Well, that way, too, you don't get his defense attorneys questioning the validity of the photo if the jailhouse took it. Yeah. You can say, we took it, we stand by it. Yeah, If anything's wrong, it's on us. I don't know. Yep. So, um, Jake, when he sat down with prosecutors, he did give them some new information. Uh, the prosecution did have a lot of what he shared. They had already put that together. But he led them um, to additional evidence. Um, and we're thinking probably murder weapons. Uh, vehicles that were used in the murders. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the vehicles was purchased specifically for the murders. Um, and we do have some info that locals said that a dive team was seen around the time of the plea deal. Yeah, they were out. And um, it's just not something you see in this part of the country. It's a very, very small town. Nothing ever happens there as far as something of this magnitude. So somebody did reach out to us and say, we did see a dive team. So we don't know if maybe it's a weapon or, you know, what. But if you think about it, too, the grandmother, Frederica, she has this huge farm. Yeah. And I would love to know if at any point since he's been working with prosecutors, have they seen law enforcement at her property? I'd be a good question. Yeah, if anybody knows locally, shoot us a message. Yeah. I kind of got the idea, too, the prosecutor said something and I just couldn't find it because it's, it's, it's over two hours long. And, um, it almost sounded like there may not that, I don't know if it's knowledge of the crimes or helping before or after. I don't think during, it almost sounded like there were other people. The prosecution thought may have in some way been involved. I yeah. don't think it's part of the murders, but it'll be interesting to see if now that he's confessed to everything, if anybody else is arrested. True. Because we know the grandmas were, but yeah. they dropped charges against them. The girl, One was for the forgery, which Jake admitted as part of this plea that his grandmother never signed these documents, that yeah. they were all forged. Angela was the one who saw the message where Hannah Roden was communicating with Tabitha, who is George the Fourth's ex-wife. And the one who signed custody over to George after obviously being threatened. The grandmother was telling Hannah, don't give in to these people. You will regret it. That's when Hannah said they will have to kill me first. That was screenshotted. And according to Jake, it was Angela who screenshotted it and then showed it to Jake. Yeah. That seems like your motive right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, he's singing like a canary. Yeah, I mean, what does he have to lose? He's never going to see his family again. He's probably never going to get to talk to them again. I don't think inmates can talk to other inmates. Yeah, I don't think At so. different facilities. So he has nothing to lose. Nope. It's not like they're going to have a family reunion at any point in this life. Yeah. Um, some of the other stuff he did share was um, that the silencer they found on the Wagner property was a prototype that failed. Uh, so we we had talked about before that they were making homemade silencers. Um, so yeah, hey, what what do you think about the gag order? I kind of wonder if they'll lift it at this point. I mean, probably not until the other three cases are resolved. But I kind of hope not for the 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 Roden family, but for our own curiosity, if one of these go to trial, Jake will testify against them. And I think that's when we hear the entire story from start to finish, from the time they started planning until the murders were completed. You know, he even talked about how the wa they had destroyed trail cameras and DVRs from the properties um, that night. Yeah, you're going to take it all with you. Yeah, it started two to three months before the planning started two to three months before the murders. And he said that they took, I believe, six cell phones out of eight victims. They took yeah. six of their cell phones and destroyed them. And they had the uh, phone jammer with them, which would have eliminated right. them being, being able to make phone calls to each other. <clears throat> yeah, it, it was weird to see the wedding band tattoo that he had gotten. I think Hannah had gotten one as well when they were together. As he's 
pleading guilty to her murder. Yeah. Um, now, George the Fourth has a the other brother. He has a hearing scheduled for next week. I, I'm curious to see if it happens. Yeah, that'll be a... Because I think it was on the evidence wasn't enough or something, wasn't it? Well, that wasn't was his something? argument. Yeah. Was that it seems like the evidence they had, he had the least against him. At least that's how the defense presented it. And they have the discovery, so they, you know, they know. But, I mean, at this point, it just seems to me the best thing they can all do is plead guilty and just go away. Yeah. Be yeah. gone. Yeah. So that was just a huge, huge shock for us. I, um, <clears throat> one thing in the article that I'm going to uh, murder on Union Hill Road, there were at least 31 gunshot wounds between the eight victims. That's crazy. That's personal. Oh, yeah. Um, Bobby Joe Manley said that the smells in the two houses where she found the bodies, she said it almost smelled like pennies that had been in your hand too long. Do you know that smell? It's really oh, yeah. bad. It's a metallic smell. Yeah. Yeah. And um, she said that uh, she smelled it in Chris Sr.'s house, and then she smelled it again in Frankie Jr.'s trailer. Yeah. Um, yeah, but at the end of the day, okay, so they didn't want to share custody of this little girl. So they kill her whole family, including her mother. Now her dad and her uncle and her grandparents are going to be in prison for the rest of their life. She's in foster care and will likely be adopted out at some point. Was it worth it? No, it's no. so messed up. It goes to show you how selfish, selfishness and the inability to understand that this child had two parents that loved her, or I don't think Jake could love his child and do what he did. Um, and now she's not going to know any of them she's seven years old now yeah we did hear as part of the plea deal now this is not something that was said in the hearing but we have heard that he did get a visitation with Sophia uh, virtually as yeah. part of this now we we can't confirm that but this is not some kind of crazy rumor yeah. and it kind of does make sense if if he's trying to um you know give the prosecution what they need to wrap at least his case up and get the others I'm sure she probably doesn't even remember him at this point. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, been years. I don't years. think so either. Yeah. Yep. So that's kind of uh, all we had on this. I think the big thing now is just to watch and see what happens with the other three. Oh, yeah. I, I would love to know their reactions. I so. bet Billy's fit to be tied. He just looks like a mean man. I'm going to tell you, though. I think the mom is like the ringleader. I do, too. So I bet she is flipping. Well, you know, she had some medical issues. She had been taken out of the jail at some point um, for medical. And that was on, I guess, her file, her website where they tell about her custody. Um, could it be that was motivation for Jake if he caught wind that his mom's sick? And we don't know this, but if, if she's got something going on with her, Maybe he's just like, forget it. Let's not go th through all this. Who knows? Uh, but yeah. it does seem like Angela was the one that had this weird obsession with this custody. Oh, yeah. And um, yeah. and that's how it started. Yep. So crazy. So we're going to keep an eye on this. We'll see if, if that hearing for George the Fourth is canceled this week. Um, and then the big one, I guess, at this point is the the hearing for the Vallow Daybell case on Wednesday. Yeah. We'll, we'll see, see what that happens. circus. I wish Wood would just drop the charges so we stop all this nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> Paging Rob Wood. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> We're waiting. File them. File them, Rob. Let Let's go. go. It's been a hot minute. Yeah. Um, yep. But yeah. So, and also for those of you who sent your addresses for stickers, we had an overwhelming response. Thank you so much. And these are going to go out likely at the end of the week. We have a little something that we're, you know. Yeah. Yeah, we're, that'll be we're cool. doing with those. And there is a spot. We have a little hidden something on these cards. See if you can find it. Yeah, let us know. Um, oh, I forgot to mention at the beginning, uh, we ate at Saul's again. Lucky. Oh, my goodness. I had I had probably some uh, beef, um, what do you call it? Broth. Beef broth beef that broth? night. <laughs> no, it was so good. So last time I ate, I did really well. I got barbecue and I got coleslaw because I was not trying to do carbs. This time? Like I broke down and I had <laughs> barbecue, mac and cheese, and potato salad. I oh. know that was a lot of carbs, but it was so good. Did you see your same waitress? Uh, that, one of them we did. Did you? Okay, yeah, cool. one of them we did. That's um, awesome. They had actually heard 
uh, and they had because we wrote our podcast on the wall because you get to sign the wall there. They had actually heard about it, um, and uh, Lisette, who works there, uh, she follows us now because she likes true crime. But hey, Lisette, yeah, I'm gonna meet you one of these days when my pancreas ain't like Lisette Rebel. There you go. Um, so the other uh, lady that was in there, she was like, "Yes, I heard, I heard. This is so cool. Oh, that's awesome." Um, so. Anyways, shout out fun. to Saul's. Oh, it was so good. That barbecue sauce that that Taylor brought home with uh, w- the last time you guys were there. Yeah. Um, I kind of wondered if that was clear liquid because I was about ready to drink it the <laughs> other night. <laughs> yeah, it is vinegar based. It has something in it. I love vinegar based. Oh, it is I'm, so good. I'm not a fan of sweet barbecue sauce. Yeah. I like a yellow mustard, which is kind of a Carolina thing. It's got vinegar. Or vinegar. Mm-hmm. I yeah, I like it with a little bite. Yeah, but it's so good. I made some barbecue the other night and put that on there. Oh, Oh, it was so good. Make you want to smack your mama. That's right. That's right. All right, guys. Well, we will see you on Wednesday in case something big comes up. And then we'll do a sweet tea session. (laughs) Yeah, it's that pain medicine. Um, So, anyways, I hope you guys have a good start to the week. And we will see you soon. Good night. Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. (gasps) No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to Chumbacasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.